Hey there, hello. So welcome to my live broadcast today. I am so hopeful that um, this particular episode will meet you where you are on your own personal weight loss journey. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let's. Oh, it's so much fun doing a live broadcast, a, a live simulcast across multiple platforms only to have certain things not working well. So hello. So today what's happening is I'm going live and I am recording my podcast. If you don't know, uh, my podcast is called Even in Weight Loss with Sherry Capilla, and it's where I go live and I share the truth and reality of how I lost weight, seeking God instead of a number on the scale. Because when I was looking at that scale and focused exclusively and only on the world and all of the diets and things, I couldn't lose weight, you guys. I could not lose weight. I couldn't stop myself per from perpetually sabotaging, doing all the things that you're probably familiar with. So we are going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to jump right into recording today's episode of the podcast. So bear with me a second while I start the podcast. All right, bear with me just a second. And here we go. Hey, you, and welcome to today's podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you what it was that I had to fix slash remove from my life externally so that I could start to make changes possible. I needed to make changes happen in my life in order to successfully lose weight. And these changes, I had to make, I ha the things that I had to do was I had to fix and remove things in my life externally is what I meant to say <laughs> in order to make internal changes possible because that's what I teach everybody is that we all can lose weight. We have the ability to lose weight. We need to make the changes in our soul, in our mind, because it's our thinking that has a problem. Okay. We perpetually want things now. Would you agree? Do you actually just want to lose weight now? Like you feel like it's so daunting and defeating when you are perpetually on a diet and not seeing the scale move. So in this episode of the podcast, I'm going to take you through these internal changes and how these internal changes actually led me to weight loss. You don't want to miss this because what I'm sharing today could be just the message that you needed in order to be freed from the house of bondage that is your fat pants. Yeah, I call it my fat pants because, or a house of bondage that is your fat pants because that's really what it was. I mean, when I was on my journey, I was so down in the dumps because I couldn't lose weight and I couldn't lose weight because I was stuck in the world, stuck in my fat pants, had lost complete and total control. And that's actually the definition of when you are feeling, feeling like you're depressed, at least the way that I was topically depressed, because now looking back, I wasn't even depressed. I was oppressed. I was oppressed by the weight of this world and the standards that I could not live up to. So let's dive in and talk about these, these changes, everything that I had to change. So as you know, I need some readers on because girls 48 years old. So something I hated that this might resonate with you, something I hated when I was trying so hard to lose weight was that there were three things I hated the entire time I was trying to lose weight. Number one, how long it took because it took way too long. Would you agree? <laughs> the older you get, the longer it takes. I hated how long it took. I hated how hard it was to do repeatedly day after day after day. And then the third thing was, I hated how weak I was in the face of temptation, how much I persistently pursued comfort and all of the lust of my flesh over what I knew I just needed to do in order to make weight loss possible. I could not stay compliant at all. If you find yourself resonating with this, I encourage you listen to the, hey there, Megan, um, listen to the rest of this episode because I'm sharing with you what freed me and what freed me could be the very thing you need to hear about. So God was on my journey, as you know, and Despite that, there were still three things I hated, how long it took, how hard it was, and how weak I was. I could not stay compliant at all, and God knew this. In fact, 
Because I finally had enough courage to walk with the Lord on my weight loss journey, he brought to my attention what was actually transpiring on my weight loss journey. He knew, he knew before I did that I didn't have a weight loss problem. I mean, of course he knew. He made this body, right? I mean, he knew He knew everything. He knows everything that I need in order to actually get out of my own way. But he knew that I didn't have a weight loss problem. I had, rather, a great big fat weakness. Do you want to hear what that weakness was? This might be something that you have to. I was impatient. Yeah. I was so stinking impatient. Why was I impatient? Because in my 20s, in my 30s, I could lose weight like that. I could skip lunch and by by dinner time have a flat stomach. And slowly time, you know, slowly, you know, just day year after year basically, I stopped being able to lose weight that easily. Very likely if you're the age 35 and plus, you're experiencing the exact same thing. And then you're on a diet after diet after diet perpetually losing patience because the scale isn't moving based upon your your point of reference from the long ago past how you used to lose weight and how quickly you used to you used to lose weight. I wanted I remember when I was on my weight loss journey, I wanted to keep on cheating on my meal plan and still lose weight. Like who does that? You probably have some semblance of that going on in your life too, but I know that this was my journey. My journey is that I wanted to keep cheating and still losing weight. I basically metaphorically wanted to have my cake and eat it too. And that just wasn't going to work. You guys know that. That's the law of cause and effect. Anyhow, I wanted to see overnight success on my weight loss journey, despite being so unable to do all of the work required, all of it perpetually day after day. But God had a plan and Lord knows I... I made notes that entire journey as he as he unfolded his plan in front of me. God had a plan. He wanted to strengthen me internally. He wanted to strengthen me internally because that is where my problem was. I had a problem with impatience, which meant that the work that needed to be done was at my soul level. It was in my thinking. He had to strengthen me internally. I needed so much internal he- healing on so many levels, even physically. And I needed that physical healing to correct everything that I had hormonally messed up through years and years of dieting and, you know, not allowing myself to eat um, as many calories as, you know, I did all the things that you probably also do on your weight or have done on your weight loss journey. He needed to help my um, help me with correcting the hormones of the years of abuse that I had given it through all of the the all of the dieting, all of the fad diets, everything, everything that you've done, I've probably done too, including the cabbage scoop soup diet. He needed to help me to heal my body of the damage I'd done with all of those years of dieting, of abusing even alcohol, and of taking for years a cocktail of antidepressants. And when the antidepressants stopped working, and Lord, you know what? I just want to pull over the car and say, thank God for those antidepressants. They helped me at a time that I needed them. But I look back on it now, and not only was I on antidepressants, but I was mixing it with a combo of alcohol and food. I was running to idols. I was running to the world for solutions instead of God. And when you go to God for the solution, even in weight loss, you need to trust not only his method, but his timing. And there was nothing about me that liked his timing. So after, so God took me through this, this journey, as I'm sharing with you, of healing me of the alcohol abuse, of the food abuse, of the antidepressants, of the chronic and persistent dehydration that I went through and all of the caloric deficits. All the while, he healed me emotionally of my desire to quit because that was the only thing I was good at on my weight loss journey was quitting. I was just, I was the biggest loser. Like I would perpetually quit on my diet every week. I remember by the time it got hard about Thursday, I was ready to give up and I'd spend any amount of money on the next one to start over on Monday. Ugh. Man, I'm so thankful to be free of that. So he healed me of my emotional desire to quit, something I couldn't do when I was just seeking the world, even just as a life coach based on secular training. I couldn't heal myself, not until I stepped into a strong relationship with Jesus. So he healed me of my desire to quit. 
to run when I needed to walk. He helped me to just kind of slow down and see that, guess what, Sherry, this is going to take a while. And so I need you to know that right now. Your weight loss journey is going to take a while. In my case, he needed to teach me to yield to his guidance, to his timeline, to his plan, because there was something in that journey, something on that journey that he needed to teach me that I could only learn in that wilderness experience, that difficult experience where I had to go through and do the hard things without an ability to turn back. And that took quite a long time. And that's when it happened. That is when it happened. I stepped into more patience. I mean, the fact that I was able to start getting rid of my impatience and start stepping into patience is in and of itself an absolute miracle. I stepped into more patience. And in the time it took me to heal my body internally, I began to notice a renewed a renewed spiritual resolve about my about myself, a supernatural desire to simply obey in a way that I had never experienced when I was dieting and just going to all of the worldly solutions. I had a supernatural spiritual desire and a spiritual resolve to simply obey. And it came as a result of God healing me internally, spiritually, and emotionally, and even physically. And as my hormones and my body healed with the right foods, my spirit was afforded time to actually be able to mature and step into wisdom. And my heart began to switch. I want this for you, so I hope you're paying attention. My heart switched from losing weight to gaining Christ. I mean, that's power. That's not something everybody will understand even when I say it. He needed to heal me internally. He needed to heal me emotionally, spiritually, and physically. But it did not happen overnight, girl. Let me just tell you, it was not overnight. <laughs> it could have been a lot faster if I would have just leaned in, if I would have gotten into a community of supportive people and you know done the things that I now do as a Christian life coach with a group coaching weight loss program. I needed that then. And so I became what I couldn't find. Anyhow, here's the thing that happened. It didn't happen overnight. It was all unfolding little by little. And with each step of obedience, every single time I just yielded, every single time I just obeyed, I was made stronger in him. And my flesh was weakened. Choice by choice, decision by decision, I was I was no longer mastered or taking counsel from my flesh. I was able to lead from a higher place, a stronger place. And that was in my spirit, through the Holy Spirit, receiving divine guidance straight from God. And that's when it happened. I began to finally, finally start dropping the weight, the weight of my desire to be skinny, the weight of wanting to fit in with everybody, the weight of my desire to be anything anymore to this world, all of that went away with the fat that I began to lose. And when I look back on my journey right now, I don't even I don't even remember how hard it was or even how long it took, but I do remember exactly how weak I was when I started out on that journey. I was weak in willpower, but now I'm strong in Christ. So I want you to know that none of your health or weight loss goals are going to happen overnight. It's just not going to happen. There's no sense quitting this diet program and running and spending a couple hundred dollars on the next one because this is going to only happen slowly for you, especially if you're dealing with any kind of hormones, stepping into perimenopause and menopause. So know that these this weight loss isn't going to happen overnight, but if you seek him first above this world, and everything that it tells you you could, should be doing, even in weight loss, you'll step into healing. So if you seek him first above what everybody's telling you to do, you'll step into healing little by little. And that is enough to get you to your weight loss promised land. So I, because you know, I do, that, I do this at the end of every podcast broadcast. <laughs> 
I give you a real Christian life coaching for weight loss question. Now, if you are working with me as a Christian life coach, you would find out that I don't tell you what to do to lose weight. I partner with the Holy Spirit to help you understand what it is that God needs you to do this time so that you can be obedient, so that you can start yielding, so that you can start losing weight little by little and not get defeated by it being little by little. Because there's really nothing wrong with little by little if you know it's God's plan. If you know that he's making you stronger and stepping you into freedom and wisdom and into something much bigger on your weight loss journey than just that number on the scale. So I want to give you one Christian life coaching, Christian life coaching for weight loss question. If you are serious about losing weight, then you need to be serious about answering this question because you're probably not losing weight because of your thinking. So here's the question. You ready? What could happen if I surrendered impatience and leaned into little by little on my weight loss journey? I'm going to, I'm going to say it one more time. What could happen if I surrendered impatience and leaned into little by little on my weight loss journey? I believe if you can start answering that question, you're going to start stepping in the direction of your freedom. If you are somebody who's struggling with weight loss, you know what? Subscribe to my podcast. I give you all the free things. I'm not giving you the free things to lose weight that everybody else in the world is telling you about how many calories and grams and what are your macros and all of those things. I'm telling you what what to do based on my years of developing the Seekers Method. I'm going to help you to get free in the area where you need freedom, and that's in the bondage of your thinking. Because you very likely are just like me, and you might not have a weight loss problem. You might just have a thinking problem. All right, that's the broadcast for today. I hope this met you where you are. If not, you know, if you need a little bit more, the Seekers Method for Weight Loss will be open in January of 2022 for just a few more women. Um, The other thing that you could do is you could visit my website, Sherry Capilla. Dot com Go up to the top where it says shop and you can get my journaling workbook where I help you to undo your thought patterns. I help you to stop conforming to the dyer's mentality. I help you to do all of those things just in one little workbook for under, I don't know, $25. You could start renewing your mind and plug in any weight loss program and learn how to just start yielding to that still small voice that you already hear. Again, there's always my podcast where I give you tons and tons of real Christian life coaching for weight loss content. And again, my podcast is Even in Weight Loss with Sherry Capilla. So I'm live now on, gosh, I have to be reminded. I think it's Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Okay, so you'll see me again tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon, and I will be live on um, right at, wherever you're watching me now, YouTube, Instagram, IGTV, um, Facebook, all the places, and I will have another, I don't know, another thing to share with you tomorrow, whatever it's called. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me live. For those of you who are here, bye. Okay. So.